Your first wholesaling real estate deal is the hardest. And we're going to tell you exactly what to do about it. I truly believe every single person in wholesaling real estate right now that hasn't gotten the first wholesaling deal, they need to start waking up. Reality is setting in. We are at pretty much the end of the year almost. Mm, almost. There. And you haven't gotten your first wholesaling deal. We have to wake up. We have to get our first wholesaling deal this year. Heck, maybe you've done some deals and you want to push 100K this year. This is not the time to be slacking. This is the time to thrive or die. Guys, today, what we're going to break down is exactly why most wholesalers struggle to get their first wholesaling deal, why it's the hardest thing possible for most people. And from our experience, helping hundreds of thousands of wholesalers actually become successful. What we're going to do today is just break down the reasons why, how you can overcome this and how you can get your first wholesaling deal as soon as possible. Most wholesalers, they have these same fundamental three or four issues. What we're going to do is basically expose them today so you know exactly how you can be a successful wholesaler. Uh, so we're excited for this, right? Yeah, pumped. I'm telling you, we, we've helped so many people get their first deal. Yeah. It's, I'm telling you. We're, it's not we're as hard as you guys think. You, you just, you got to do it. You got to do it. That's what we're going to talk about today. So we're ready to go. We're excited today to help you get your first wholesaling deal. So without further ado, this is big stuff. This is really important because if you are not going out here and actually making the change that you know you deserve in your life, you got to do it. This is going to be a very uncomfortable conversation for a lot of people, but I feel like I have to hold you by the shoulders and shake you till you actually start making a difference in your life. This is not, oh, I'd like to get a deal or not. Like, this is for your family. This is for you. This is for your future. This is for your financial freedom forever. This isn't things that I've taken lightly in my life when I started getting into wholesaling. This is not something that you took lightly wow. getting started in wholesaling real estate. And I don't think this is a little fun, fun and games all day. This is a serious thing that's going to make serious change in your life. Like if you're the type of person that just wants to scroll on TikTok or that they want to see the fun little video that, that this is not the time to be doing it. This is the time to put your head down, grind hard and make the life of your dreams. Nobody's ever gotten successful anywhere in life by sitting on their butt and just hoping or manifesting it to happen. They got out there and they did the work. They conquered their financial freedom. They went out here and did everything possible. We're going to break down exactly why most people can't get to that point and how you can get to that point right now. So first and foremost, you need to wake up. A lot of wholesalers right now, they are sleeping. I, I don't know what other way to say it. Sleep they're napping. Walking. They're sleep. Sleepwalking is probably the best one. They're yeah. napping. They're, they're going through the motions. Going right? through videos. Oh, okay. I'll get through the video. Yeah. I'm going to do my 30 calls today. And just, I'm just, yeah. Listen, guys, wake up. Wake up. Pretend this is the point where you already cut your $10,000 check. You got the, you got that fluffy phone call. We don't focus on any of that stuff because that's where most of you get screwed. We are the ones that, hey, let's take action to get your first deal. The first thing you have to work on, I'm going to tell you right up front, you need to start listening to your vocabulary. Like I listen to some of your vocabularies. It, I'm just trying to help you out. You can't try. I think I should. If it doesn't have a must in it, it's not going to happen. Why do you brush your teeth once or twice a day for most of you? Not all of you, but most of you. Why? Because it's, it's a must. I must brush my, no matter what happens in your life. I guarantee you, most of you are brushing your teeth. Why is that? Until you treat wholesaling with that same conviction, you're not going to get the results you want. This is not a try. I should. I wish. I'm going to watch 400 videos. Why does this guy do this? Why does Zach do that? We don't focus on like exactly what we do today. The reason is you have to start on the journey that he started on six, seven years ago. I started on 20 plus years ago because that's where the real work's done. There's so many people talking about, this is what I do and I make millions doing it. No, how do I get my first deal? How do I do it? I've never forgotten where I came from, how I started it and what I do in this business. So first thing is start listening to your vocabulary. And if you're talking yourself out of it, you're not gonna finish this race. So listen to your words, try, should, change it to must and watch what happens. Get rid of all the crap in your life that's not serving you and decide, make a decision on this life today what you're going to do because honestly, it's the only difference between successful wholesalers and all the people who quit. It's true. So one uncomfortable truth I need to hit you in the mouth first before I get, get this going is where you, are, where you are at in your life right now, and this is not fun to say for a lot most people, but where are you currently at in life right now financially, wherever, in your relationship, personal, business, whatever, it's directly correlated to the thoughts and actions you have done. Let me repeat that one more time. Your thoughts and actions that have been done 
has completely correlated to where you're at in your life right now. Are you broke? It's because of the thoughts and actions you have done. Oh, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying so hard. Trying. You're trying so hard. There's some fundamental reasons why you might be working hard and not going anywhere. I know a lot of people are just running on a hamster wheel thinking that they're traveling. You're not going four miles uh, a day traveling on a hamster wheel. You're, stay, you're in the same place. Oh, I'm working so hard, rolling my tires through the mud, not doing anything, right? You're stuck. And because you're working hard and grinding, you think you're actually like deserve some. Guys, your thoughts and actions are completely correlated to where you're at. Every single person that we talk to, you see every Monday we have a new person on the podcast. Uh, next Monday, we're excited to announce we have an awesome podcast. We just recorded uh, two brothers, $500,000, eight months. Started a year and a half ago, yeah. right? And when I talk to these people, you know, I, I can talk to you and me. Like we're, I think we're very abnormal people. Uh, we're a little intense for things. But when I talk to the average person making half a million dollars, eight months, it's not that I, it'd be nice to make half a million this year. It'd be nice to have 100K a month. You talk to these men and women. They say, I will have 100K a month by the end of the year. I have a plan. I'm executing it and I'm going after it and I'm not stopping. You have to be changing your thoughts. So your thoughts and action. Your thoughts will correlate to your actions too. You can mm -hmm. do actions with bad thoughts, but if your thoughts are bad, your diet is bad, you will not do well. So one thing I need to understand here is you have to wake up. I've got the dog in the studio today. But you need to wake your butt up. If you go out here and just have bad thoughts and bad actions, you won't get anywhere. So one uncomfortable truth we need to talk about today is your dreams will die if you decide to not make a change. Either if you want to change in your life. So let's talk about it. You're, you're not making any money. You want to get rich, right? If you want to make a change, you are going to have to change. The previous version of yourself that maybe they're sad all the time. They don't want to work hard. They, that, that was the old you. You're going to have to change. And once you change, I'm telling you right now, you will have a change in your life. You cannot affect the environment around you. I know a lot of people are in very bad environments. I, I, I get it. it. It's There's tougher environments out here. There's tougher stories getting out. You cannot change your environment. I know for a lot of people, but you can change the way that you react to your environment. Let me repeat this one more time. There's a lot of people out here, single moms. They're in a tough spot. They're working 60, 70 hours a week. And then they're trying to wholesale on top of that. It's a tough environment. I get it. You got to put food on the table. But the way you react to that environment is going to completely change the way that you can get out in that situation. And so either your dreams will die if you stay the same or you make a change and your dreams will live. So you have to make that conscious thought. Of the re I'm trying to change your conscious programming of who you are right now. And then I'm going to give you the thoughts after and the information after. Because once you can make that switch, I'm going to change and then get the information, you will do better. So I'll talk about this one last time. Your dreams will die. You'll stay the same. You'll stay broke. You'll stay struggling your entire life. If you decide to stay at where you're at right now, you have to make the change. This is super important. So why are you becoming successful? Why haven't you gotten your first wholesaling deal? Think about this for a second. This is really important. Most wholesalers, I'm going to talk to 80% of wholesalers out here. You are not marketing enough. And I, I found most wholesalers have this issue. They think they're working hard, but they're not. And the best analogy I can have, that's why I chose to put a gym shirt on. You know why? Because there are two types of people in the gym. I mean, there's multiple types, but there's there's a tale of two people at the gym, right? More there's, the, there's the guy in the gym that works out for an hour a day. Yeah. But he walks around. He's got on his phone. He works out like five minutes, really. But he's at the gym for an hour. I was at the gym for an hour. Yeah. And you got the one guy that goes crazy or gal. They work out hard for an hour, don't even on their phone. And then over a year, one person's jacked and the other person isn't. But they both were in the gym for an hour. They, they he, he deserves to be jacked. He spent an hour at the gym. No, 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 no. Just because you put the time in, just because you're doing something doesn't mean you deserve the result. It's about the quality and the quantity you spend with your time too. And so a lot of wholesalers think, oh, I, I spent two hours drying for dollars. Oh, I spent an hour cold calling. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think when I say you're not marketing enough, it's like, you're not grinding 14 hours a day, bro. That's not what it is. A lot of you guys are marketing enough or you're mar you have enough volume, but the quality of list sucks. You're, you're trying to wholesale MLS properties. You're, you're trying to do subject two deals and wholesale them. We're like, you know what they are? They're busy wholesalers. They're busy wholesalers. You do not get paid for busy. And when people say I'm busy translation, you ready? You know what it means? It means I'm just doing stuff to keep my mind occupied because the stuff I really need to do makes me wildly uncomfortable. And the reality is when you do uncomfortable stuff, you have a tendency to go back to what you normally do, you know, call a buddy or two, fidget, 
order something on Amazon. That is not marketing. And most of you are just busy. Busy is an excuse. It is a procrastination tool and you're just killing time. Remember, as a wholesaler, you do not get paid per hour. You get paid on results. And until you can focus on getting results, you're going to remain busy. Busy is your ego telling you, but I'm trying, but I'm trying, I'm occupying. I went to the gym for an hour, but I only spent five minutes lifting weights and doing stuff. Listen, guys, get rid of it. Until you become accountable to yourself, none of this is going to matter. If you're busy, that's what you try to do to impress your boss when you go to work, right? Look how busy I am. And then there's other employees that go, hey, look at the results I get. And those people usually wind up working for themselves and going on to be wildly successful. You have to get rid of the busy. Our entire American work culture is about being busy. That is nothing more than your ego trying to compensate for what you're actually not doing, which is getting results. So guys, if you're busy or people tell you you're busy, ask yourself, are they actually getting results? And nine times out of 10, busy people are just shoving their ego in your face and go, look how busy I am. I don't want to work with busy people. It doesn't get anything done. It's just, it's unmanaged chaos and they want to feel overwhelmed. So someone will tell you, go, it's okay. You're trying your best. That's not how it works. That's not how it works, so guys. We get results here. There's not one wholesaler on YouTube that has produced more first deals more results for the wholesaling community than us. I can confidently say that. Not one. Not even we, close. We, we don't do private $15,000 programs where only have 10 people or hundreds of thousands of people inside of freehosting.com, tens of thousands joining freehosting.com every single month, Thous thousands and thousands of people subscribing to YouTube channels uh, that we have every single month. There's not one person that's produced more results. So I know what it takes. So are you not marketing enough? The number one thing is they're doing the wrong thing, but very important is the lack of volume. And I said, a lot of people have volume, but I would say a big killer for a lot of people is going to be volume. And so some people have the volume, some people don't. But for a lot of you guys that aren't getting your first deal, you're just not doing enough volume. I promise if you do enough volume, results will happen. You will get that first deal. The biggest killer of your wholesaling dreams is most likely going to be your volume. And let me, let me tell you something that's really important about volume. Volume always comes from discipline. If you can create a schedule and stick to it, you'll do well. Uh, look, one example I had with a uh, young cat uh, who hasn't talked to me ever since I had this conversation with him. Uh, and this was a, in my opinion, it was such an uncomfortable conversation that they didn't want to ever talk to me again. Mm -hmm. um, but somebody else talking to him and said, Zach, I'm just too busy to cold call. I work way too hard. I just, it, it's so difficult for me just to call. And I, I just forgot to cold call today. I, you throw excuses at me. I'm just going to throw you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to rip a new one in you because excuses are going to be the killer to your success. So I'm looking at this person and you know, they're, they ain't the skinniest person in the world. You know, I, I, I get it. I ain't skinny either. I don't miss a meal. You know that, but this person's told me that they just forgot the cold call. I straight up said to this guy's face. I'm like, did you forget to eat today? No, no, I ate lunch. I ate breakfast and I'm going to eat dinner tonight. I'm like, wow, that's a must. So, so th that was a requirement in your mind that you eat dinner every night. Yes, of course. Here's the difference between you and me. If I don't cold call, during the day, I know I'm not reaching my potential. I know I'm not doing the best for my ancestor. I'm not doing the best for my future family. I'm not doing best for the man that I know I can become. My future potential, I know where I can be and I have to be at that point. I was cold calling five hours a day, five days a week for a year straight. I knew it was a must for me to do. So I told this guy, I'm like, since you forgot a cold call today, let's do this. Either you cold call tomorrow or you don't eat. Oh, that was a, that was a, that hit a nerve point with this guy. What do you mean I can't eat? If you don't cold call, you don't eat dinner. I promise you, if you want to, if your, your want of eating has to be greater than your fear of cold calling. Let me repeat that one more time. Your fear of cold calling has to be so great that you're not going to eat. I don't think so. And uh, next day I'm like, Hey, you cold call? And he said, no. Uh. And I'm like, you eat? He said, well, yeah, it was so late. You know, it was, it was nine o'clock. I'm like, but you ate though. You made eating a priority over your dreams. Mike. And so the, the thing about cold calling and, and talking to sellers and starting a lot of people have this fear, right? Your fear of being broke, your fear of staying complacent your entire life, your fear of never being able to spend time with your family because you got that nine to five job or, or all these things. It has to be so great. It has to be greater than your fear of talking to a seller. Somebody calling you a poopy head over the phone. That fear, what's more, what is more fearful for me? Someone's calling me a poopy head or my fear of being broke and not being the man that I know I deserve to be for me and my family. Guys, you know me, family is the most important thing in my life. 
It is above everything else. You have the same way. We're all the same way. And so for me, knowing that if I can't take care of my family, because I'm so scared to go out here and talk to a seller, that's not how I was raised. That's not who I am as a man. That's not how you are as a man or woman either. I know that. And so when I get people that are scared to call, of course you're scared to call, but you should be more fearful to go out here and live your dreams. Uh, the last analogy, I know I'm the king, people love my analogies all day, but the best analogy for this is if you're scared to go and jump in an ice bath, right? I know a lot of people are scared of going in the ice bath, right? It's not fun. It's, it's not fun. What if I lit your hair on fire? Would you go in the ice bath? Yes. Go ahead you, first. You, your fear of burning to death will be a lot larger than your fear of being in the cold ice bath, right? And that's how you got, a lot of people are just, they're frozen in front of the ice bath. Like, oh my God. Well, if I let your hair on fire, then your priorities change, right? Yeah. You have to change your priorities. Your priorities have to change. Changing your financial freedom, living the life of your dreams, going out here and being the man or woman you know you need to be and be rich. That is where you have to have a priority over of being scared of not doing the volume, not being disciplined. It's you guys, super important. You got to understand why, we preach so much on volume, okay? If I thought you could make two phone calls and make a hundred grand, I would teach it to you. But I have 21 years says it doesn't work that way. The reality is most of you are lacking experience, which is fine. You know how you get over that? Volume. Tons of volume because you you get the journey, the experience, and you actually learn how to do it. You learn how to talk to sellers, qualify, disqualify the whole thing. The volume was what sets you apart. So if you only call 20 people, you're not going to get the education you need. Now, there's instructional education, which we're to the point with freewholeselling.com. And then you got to go through the actual mechanics to do it. I can sit here and teach you to block, tackle, football, whatever. But until you go out in a game or a scrimmage, you're not going to be able to put the theory to the actual skill set. And it's the same volume over compensates for your inexperience and it actually gives you a shot to get a deal. But if you're only going to make 20 phone calls with no experience, I'm going to guarantee you a hundred percent failure. So when you guys, oh, I made 20 calls today. I only, I, I did 30 texts. I'm like, did, was that 8 AM or 9 AM? That's my answer to you. And on another note, when we talk about excuses, when people give excuses, I'm at a point in my life where, and you guys want to understand, like, even if you have an excuse, don't give it because nothing gets solved with excuses. Nothing. Unless it's a life or death situation. If you didn't cold call, just man up. I didn't do the cold call. I got to do better. I, this is my plan going forward. But going, well, you know, I had to make dinner. My in-laws were coming over and you're like, and I got a little tickle in the back of my throat. You're just going to, you're not going to be perfect every day. Nine times a 10, I don't even feel like working out. I just do it because I know what the end result is. Volume makes up so much when you start in wholesaling. And if you skip the volume part, you will not succeed in wholesaling. You're not going to make any money and you're going to have to go through years. And we're trying to get it exponentially. You know how we exponentially teach you? By massive amounts of volume. It is a actually a self-teaching tool. And here's the key part. If you actually do it and commit it, it means you have the conviction to succeed in wholesaling. But if you're only going to make 20 phone calls and you have all these parameters it's not going to work because you bought into someone's system going, but he said I could sit on the beach and, and do this and do nothing. It's not how it works. Guys, volume, volume, volume. There is no replacement for it. I don't care whose program you do. If you don't do volume as a beginner wholesaler, you are doomed. It is non-negotiable and get rid of your excuses. Even if you have an excuse, learn the art of not making excuse. Go, you know what? You're right. I didn't do it. Here's my plan going forward. So let's talk about volume. Volume stems from two things, like I've said, a lack of accountability and a lack of discipline. Let me explain this one more time. If you do not have discipline, you will not do well with the volume. So why is volume so, volume's important because it gets the reps in. You just, it's fishing, I, fishing 101. If I spend five hours fishing, I'm more likely to catch a fish than if I spend an hour fishing. That is just a dummy logic 101. Statistically, if you spent five hours fishing, Done that. right, you'll yeah. probably catch more fish than spending one hour fishing, right? But everybody wants to do the catch. But we don't talk the about the time and th like, right, right. But like, statistically, you'll do better. So like, how do you get your first deal? Well, statistically, you should probably put more volume out. That is it. You want more muscles, work out more, right? But like, there's other factors. I get it. The other thing is a lack of accountability. Guys, I, I know all these gurus and stuff. They, they like, oh, yeah, you hire me. I'll give you accountability. I'll text you every single day, right? That's important. We give accountability to people. Like, I get it. But the person you should be accountable to yourself is you. Yeah. That, that's the first person you need to be accountable for yourself. I, I'm telling you right now, if you're not accountable in your own life, 
you will struggle. There will be struggles. There's struggles with being accountable. It's, it ain't easy. Sometimes you look in the mirror and say, I got to make a change. But their lack of accountability will make you struggle. The, the person, you know yourself better than anyone else. You know your insecurities. You know your issues. You know when you're making an excuse. You know when your brain's starting to do it. You know this. And if you can't catch yourself on it, you will let your thoughts run you. Your thoughts are not who you are. You can actually control your thoughts, but you have to make a change in your life. So you have to make a discipline. I tell everyone, make a schedule. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Have a time. From 5 to 7 p.m., I cold call no if, ands, or what's about it, right? I've, I've said the story a million times. Cold call 2 to 7 p.m. in my college dorm, and that's all I did. My uh, roommate would always bring a girl over sometimes, usually Friday, maybe 6 o'clock. I'd be like, no, she ain't, she ain't coming here. I'm cold <laughs> she call. She can cold call. She can cold call if she wants, but yeah. we're doing it. He's literally sitting on, on a bed, the other room, and I'm calling. And he's like, one, one more hour, Zach, will be done. Yeah. That's what I do. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. That was a time that was a non-negotiable for me. That was my schedule. I'm living my dream. Now the same roommate calls me asking me for real estate advice, obviously. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it's on the cold call right now. You have to make discipline accountability. I cannot sleep at night knowing that I didn't try everything I possibly could to live the life of my dreams. I believe I'm at my potential at 23 years old, but I know what my potential is at 25, 26, 27, 28. And that's the man I'm, I'm, ch- I'm, I'm reaching for that man. That's the man I'm chasing. And I know for me at 23, I've reached my max potential because of what I did at 18, 19, 20 years old. I cannot sleep at night knowing I did not reach my max potential because I'm here to inspire myself and inspire everyone around me. Your lack of accountability and discipline, you have to make that change. It's all by making it do it. So how do you, you know, everyone can say to make a schedule, but it's always that why of why you want to get into it, right? Yeah. And the one thing you have to understand is, your why must make you cry. Let me repeat that one more time. Your why must make you cry. You see how I said the word must on it? If your why does not make you cry, you will not get your first wholesaling deal. So, you know, I don't get emotional on live streams, but if I really, really got in the mindset of like, what, what, what would my life be if I had two kids as a grocery store manager making 60 grand a year and I had to miss their ballet recital or whatever because I had work, right? Because grocery store managers work on the weekends, right? Mm-hmm. How would that feel? How would I feel going home and I miss them and I'm working 60, 70 hours a week. I see the kids growing up. I can I literally, I can visualize this in my mind. I get emotional thinking if that was my life. I see them growing up and I'm missing it because I'm working so much and I'm broke. How, why, does that feel good at all? If I have some family members that need help with money or a situation like that, and I can't help them, right? Heck, they, they, this can make you cry too like crazy. If, if I had a, a dog and he's older, right? You saw the dog um, and he's getting older, right? And he had this life changing, life changing surgery. It's four grand to save his life for an extra three or four years. And I'm broken. I can't do it. He has to die yeah. because I can't afford to do it. That would make me cry. And so why do you think I work so hard? Why do you think I've done everything in my power of complete discipline and control over my life? Why do you think I've put in this blood, sweat and tears? Why do you think that I do these live streams and all these things? Because I know it's going to, some person's going to see this and say, Hey, I'm going to make a change too. And that helps their family out. Right? So I, I didn't just save my life. You didn't save our family's life. I didn't save my future kid's life. I'm saving your family's life too. And thinking about just my situation makes me almost want to cry thinking about if I didn't actually work hard, but thinking if I didn't inspire you guys to go do it yourself. Think of all the dogs I'd have to die for that, right? It, it's, it's sad, right? And so your why must make you cry. If it doesn't motivate you to get out of bed, you're going to stay in bed all sad. You have to make that change. It's, it's got to be moving. And I'm going to put it one step further. So a simple hint fear for your why, <clears throat> ride it out. You can't just be in your mind. You got to put it on paper and you got to put it in a place that where it's going to annoy you. It's like that, that little, it's like an annoying Zach or Rick sitting on your shoulder. Like, Hey, here's what I need to do. And so if you put it on your bathroom mirror, most of you look at it at least twice a day or like put it in your car or next to your computer and just write it out and touch it. Look at it every day. Think like a football player. When you touch the tunnel, when you go out, it's like, give it your all, you know, the, the 12th man's watching you, whatever it is. And do it. Now, your whys, I'm here to tell you kind of the easier part. It's got to be emotional. So what's going to happen when the first person punches you in your face with your why? Are you going to like crawl up and go, oh my God, that's terrible. I guarantee you're going to get punched in the mouth. Not physically punched, but you're going to be attacked because you're doing what 95% of the world tries to avoid. You're, you're trying to actually make a difference and be independent and, and have unlimited income. You have to have conviction. And all I mean by conviction is like, if you look at a bridge and you see this smooth steel bridge, you go, I'm going to cross that bridge. Your conviction says, I'm going to cross this river 
no matter what happens to me. All of a sudden, the bridge falls down and the water's running 20 knots. Are you going to quit? Are you going to find a way to get through it? Your conviction is your suit or armor that goes over your why. says, no matter what this person says to you, and here's a little hint, your family and friends are going to be the hardest attackers on you. Oh, it's a scam. Don't do it. And if you're going to go, if you're one of those people that has to have their acceptance, your why is going to get destroyed. Your conviction is your suit of armor, your bulletproof vest going, you know what? Rick and Zach told me you were going to say this. I'm focusing. I have a two-year plan. I'm moving forward. I don't want to rely on a paycheck every two weeks. I want complete financial abundance. I want freedom to do whatever I want, but I got to put in the time and the effort. That's conviction. And if you can't get conviction with your why, don't try this because I guarantee you're going to be sucked down. And it's going to be, unfortunately, here's the truth. It's going to be a lot of people that are closest to you. It might be other wholesalers, stuff like that. You, they're got, 95% of them are going to attack you. So if you know that going into it, So the first, I tell you, I'll tell you right. The first time I got attacked wholesaling was direct from the family. Like, oh my God, you're going to come to us and take all our money and ask us and we're all going to put it at risk. I'm just like, is that what you really think about? I shouldn't even said that. I'm like, no, don't worry. I have my way. I got my path figured out. You don't need other people's acceptance. How you protect it against that. And a lot of you are so dependent on what your family thinks of you. Get conviction. Because if you don't have conviction, you're not going to survive the onslaught of attacks that are not if they're coming. They're absolutely 100% coming. But once you get through that, then you can achieve the goal that you're going out. But if you're going to rely on what others think of you, you're going to get destroyed with it. Conviction, conviction, conviction. Are you willing to cross that river without a bridge? Because sometimes in wholesaling, that's what we have to do. And don't don't get freaked out over the family thing. I, I I'll let you know. I think you overblow it a little. Oh, uh, you see. Uh, no, around. can I explain this? Yeah. If you really look at it hard, what wholesaling is, right? You can look at it as a side hustle business thing, right? If I tell my family, hey. I'm spending about two or three hours a day playing Call of Duty. Are they going to say, that's terrible. Oh, how dare you? Oh my gosh. Look at you. Ew. Like, look at this guy. Ew. I'm going to the gym. I go to the gym for an hour and I play video games for an hour and then I watch Netflix. That's three Mm -hmm. hours I do a day of just myself, me time. Oh my God. Look at you. Ah, You're, that'll never work. What what do you mean video game? That'll never work. But if you say spend three hours a day wholesaling, everyone's like, oh my God, stop. Oh, stop. Oh my God. But if I tell you, I spend about an hour or two a day just reading books. Your family's not going to say you're weird. Don't do that. No, there's like, yeah, that's what he likes to do. That's fine. Right. And so like, it's literally, you tell your parents, like tell your parents, tell your family, like, would you rather me spend an hour or two just playing video games all day or just trying this business that cost me no money that I could potentially do well in? Well, if you put it like that, I mean, I guess, right? Like people my age, they, they will spend an hour on TikTok, an hour on Netflix, and then they'll go out here and work out and play video games, like like four hours. Yeah. If you put that time, I mean, maybe work out, right? But like you spend the three hours just wholesaling, your family can't be upset at you. It's kind of a foolproof method, right? And it's a little different, right? Because kids my age play video games. It's a little different like from you. But like, same thing with you. It's like, if you told your parents like, hey, would you rather I fish for two hours a day or just do this business, right? It's like, I can't really be mad at you, right? Like, ha- no one can be mad at you that you, like, you spend an hour or two a day fishing, right? And so you have to remember, it's your mindset here. And so like, another thing is like, I get hate comments every single day. You get it. We all get it too. Every single time I get someone says, you're a loser on, on like a comment or whatever. I always go back and I get, there's a million comments that said, thank you, Zach, you're great. Yeah. Every time I get, someone tells me a loser, I literally, what I've been doing lately is I just screenshot them. A, um, I screenshot them a message I get from somebody. One last time was a uh, 19 year old kid. He sent me a check, it was 10,000. He said, Zach, you changed my life. This $10,000 is going to change everything. I literally, I just send it to the guy and then th- th- I get no replies back. The truth is for every time, single time someone says something mean to me that makes me want to quit, I think about somebody's life I've changed, someone's family's life I've changed, everything, and get them out of that job. And so nothing can stop me. When, when I've gotten my first deal and I make millions of dollars now, when I get a seller says something mean to me, I don't care because I know exactly what doing this has done for me and my family and what it can do in the future. So I, guys, it's just, it's an inspired, honestly, I did what I thought was, I didn't think it was risky when I did wholesaling because <laughs> for those of you like, okay, yeah, my family said the same thing. I get it. I did the family plan. I committed 12 years to it. It didn't work. It doesn't mean it's true for everybody on here, but I mean, the reality is your family just wants you to be safe. They want you to be comfortable. These are all places, if you want to get to the other side and have financial freedom and freedom of your time, comfortable and safe, it doesn't exist. Everyone who's made money, there's a few people have been handed up, but for most people's journey, it's a it's a wild ride. It was extremely uncomfortable and it was crazy. And that's where family goes, oh, I don't want that for you. And the reality is, 
that's what you want. I've always wanted it for him, but like there's a part of me wants like is wholesaling right for my son. I never forced him into it. No. But here's the difference, guys. Okay. So if you want to make the change in your family, take note from me, okay? I've been doing this 21 years. I'm 53 years old. I just did it and I showed the results of what the change could do for my family and my life. Now, in the beginning, everyone's like, you're absolutely nuts. I actually left a very decent job. It was safe and comfortable. And I went backwards in pay and I got wildly uncomfortable, completely unpredictable, never knew when I was getting paid. You all know this journey right now because most of you are in it. And now I'm on the other side. Everyone's like, how the heck can we do that? I'm like, where were you when I was struggling? And I'm here to tell you is just if you want to instigate change in your family and your direct influence, just do the change. Don't talk about it. Do it because that's the only way you really make an impression on your family. Telling them what you're going to do and millions you're going to make, it doesn't work. You have to show, hey, I got freedom with time. I spend time with the kids. I'm helping mom. I'm paying medical bills. If you truly want to do it, you actually have to do it first and then they will follow. But in the beginning, when you tell people, the telling's what creates so much heartache. So a little hint to you, don't tell, just do. And before you know it, a year or two will go by and I'm like, oh my Not God. Like, don't tell, show. Show. Show the check. Yeah. I promise you, once you show that check, uh, your family's going to be like, oh, like give an example. Keep say, doing that. Say say you were overweight. They go, hey, I just started an amazing diet program and I'm going to lose 100 pounds. No, no, you're better off just losing the 100 pounds and then let people come to you. It, listen, as a parent, I, I ain't the perfect parent. I know a lot of you think I am, but the reality is your kids watch what you do and they mostly ignore what you say. And if you don't think that's true, ask one of your older kids directly. It's the truth. I asked him, like, he's hit me with stuff, and I'm just telling you, you actually have to do in this world. Too many people talk, less people do, so take the action. Think of it like a weight loss type of deal. I'd rather you lose the 100 pounds and go, man, what'd you do, Rick? I go, listen, I just made a change in my life. That's it. So do it. So let's talk about this. Let's get some information out. You know, a lot of wholesalers, too, this is about the 20%. They have a lack of not knowing what to do. And so maybe they do the volume. They got all the energy, but they don't, they're not doing the right way, right? They're wholesaling on the MLS they're calling the pre-foreclosures. They're, they're doing lists that absolutely suck. They don't know what they're doing, right? Um, the wholesaling real estate industry, and I hate to say this, this hurts my heart. Most people in the wholesaling industry actually don't subscribe or follow me or do anything. It's, it's the honest truth. It's not a that. bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but I know. And so the reason why I talk to most wholesalers that don't follow me, they are in the wholesaling guru hamster wheel trap. What the wholesaling guru hamster wheel trap is a four quadrant thing. I've actually, um, actually mapped it out. I've bounced off all in four. seven years. I've seen the guru trap and it, it's, it's about a cycle of four. So what's cycle one guru tells you something to get you excited. It's new. It's innovative. Oh my gosh. Right. Think of a Ponzi scheme. It's new. <laughs> it's new. It's innovative. Oh my gosh. This will change everything. Number two, they get you excited. They put you on an email list. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Number three, they take your payment. Number four, it doesn't work or it fizzles out. And then boom, so go again. There's this new, awesome new method, novations. I'll get you excited, get you a little webinar. You pay me money to learn and people get in trouble for innovations. And now we're going to do, oh, AI. And it just, it, it is a hamster wheel. It Always is, have it, something it is, to sell you. So what I want you to understand is every year, the gurus come out with something new. They put you on the list. They try to sell you and then it doesn't work. And then it's, it's through this wheel. And the truth is the only thing that gets you off that wheel is not to do the new thing that no one's ever done. Do the thing that works. So for example, the one thing I always say is think about food. Think about this. Is it easier to learn somebody's recipe and cook it than to create your own food? Like think about apple pie, think about burger. Like, uh, don't do no, that. no, but like somebody had to invent it. Like someone had to invent that food, right? Someone had to invent pizza or whatever. You thinking you're going to invent a new food or a new dish is a lot more difficult and risky because that dish might not go well. Then it's just using somebody's, it's like, I can, I can make my own style of pizza, but somebody already made the pizza. It's better if you learn just how to make really good pizza from a really good chef and then do that from there, right? It's like football too. I love football. You're not going to invent don't be the guy trying to be the, the new Patrick Mahomes type person. Like try to be like Tom Brady. I promise you, if you try to be like Tom Brady and you actually are his same skill set, you'll do well. Trying to be your, like this new type of player is not going to work. And so get off the hamster wheel. Do what actually works for the 99% of wholesalers out here. They get a list. They reach out to a seller on that list. They find a buyer and they wholesale it. Don't get on any other hamster wheel trap. Don't be doing that. Okay. We have a... I've shown this book a million times. Can you show that book? I, I, I want to, how real estate fortunes are made. Yes. This is a book 
from 1972, right? 19, this is funny. We actually bought this on a flip and this was inside the house, right? Yeah. Um, and so this was a book. It's not online published. 1972, How Real Estate Fortunes Are Made by George Bockel. Tried and true system, how to real estate, invest in real estate, wholesale, subject to, how to do uh, lease options, creative financing, how to find salesmen. Basically what that means is basically how to find people to run your real estate investing operation. 1972, look how old this page is. This is like a wholesaling Bible to us, right? These are tried and true old systems of wholesaling real estate that have worked since the six. And this guy wrote a book and he was an old man by in the 72, like in the twenties and thirties and forties, how to get into real estate investing, right? There's not new strategies that are going to come out. Um, show uh, that Zig Ziglar book right there. When you have a new acquisitions wholesaling coach, he's not going to invent a new way to sell. They're, they're literally, they're, this is what these wholesaling gurus do. They go, okay, ooh, I'm going to make a course based on this book from 1994, right? And then they go here and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, 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 yes. Heck, 1982. Even the mindset stuff, I can give me the, uh, that one right there. The uh, Yeah, that one. Even the mindset, I didn't invent this mindset stuff. This is stuff from Tony Robbins, one of the greatest mindset coaches in the entire world, okay? One of the greatest books. I love this. Awaken the Giant Within. The, the thoughts and disciplines and things is from Tony Robbins. But guess what Tony Robbins got most of his stuff from? Jim Rohn. And Jim yeah. Rohn basically goes off a of stoic philosophy. Like, I'm telling you and guys. That's the book I bought when I was yeah, 18. This is old, yeah, he I got it at a garage I know. sale. So what I'm telling you guys is there's not new methods out here to wholesale or to talk to sellers or whatever. We have these psychology books. Guys, the things that we teach you is I didn't invent it. Yeah. The only thing I've claimed to invent, and I'll be straight up with you, is trashing on gurus. <laughs> and uh, pretty that's pretty much like even reverse trying for dollars, we, we coined the name of it. But like putting sticky notes and notes on houses have been done since the 1900s, been, yeah. right? So I just want to let you know, like when a guru or like someone tells you, you have no wholesaling, it's, it's dead. You have to do this new thing. I, These saw, are I saw an ad today. Wholesaling is now dead. I've watched it for 20 years. On market real estate is even in that book. Okay. So you know what the problem is, we've we've convoluted the word wholesaling. And everyone's trying to wrap in all this thing. I, I saw a product out. I, I see it everywhere. And everyone thinks it's the great, you know, people think it's the greatest thing. When you have to use legal forms, power of attorneys to innovations or trying to sell your wholesale t uh, deal for retail, it's not wholesaling. You're using legal terminology that really requires a lawyer's insight, input, and information. Do not mix this up with wholesaling. Wholesaling is the art of finding discounted deals and making quick money with little to no risk. All these other things, it's not wholesaling and you guys are getting distracted. MLS. I never thought in my lifetime someone would come out with an MLS wholesaling strategy course. You told me six years ago. I was a year into wholesaling, yeah. right? You're like, this guy? He's selling, of course, how to wholesale in the MLS. This was six years ago. This is before even whole, oh, yeah. and it, all the whole MLS wholesaling courses came out like th two, three years ago. That's when it got hot. Six years ago, I'm like, on the MLS? Yeah. This was six years ago. I'm like, this dude's stupid. And he never actually, he and secretly, and we know this guy, he, he gets 90% of his deals doing direct mail off market, but he's selling a course on MLS, even though he fails at on them, it just guys. I, listen, there, there was one small window in my 21 years of wholesaling. MLS somewhat worked. Well, there's people right now that are making hundreds of yeah. thousands a month in MLS wholesaling. There's also people making a hundred million dollars a year uh, playing soccer and basketball. What's the chance that you're going to be the next LeBron James? Not well. What's the chance that you're going to be the best player on the pickup court? Pretty high if you train hard, right? Yeah. I'm just telling you guys, there are exceptions to the rule. There's the Leo Messi's and the Ronaldo's in the world, right? But there's also the guy that's pretty good at soccer that can make decent money, right? 2010 to 2011 was the only time I ever searched the MLS. You know why? The, the listings were overwhelming. I mean, it was ridiculous. They couldn't find buyers for anything. But we had the worst market we had in 100 years. Guys, I don't think we're going to see that again for a long, long time, at least in my lifetime. So why would I build an entire course along strategy? And then my favorite is like, you think the bird method has nothing to do with wholesaling. It, it, it is a landlord strategic long-term hold and it only works in certain market cycles. Obviously seven, seven and a half percent interest rates. Can I see that book too? Traction. No, left. Left. And the last one is, I'm just going to roast a guru real quick or a couple this, of them. This is the most abused book so on the- uh, This book is actually, 
very innovative. I, I will tell you, book. this is a book from nine. Hold this book. This book is basically from 2011. Every single real estate wholesaling guru that teaches you how to scale to 100K a month, we teach you how to do it too. Yeah. Huh. They all steal from this book. I'm not lying to you right now. And so if you guys, I got, I saw some comments. So this guy taught me systems to scale. Literally the graphics on this book, you can actually get it for free. Um, there's you also get, ways yeah, around it. Download how it. to actually train people. Guys, I hate to say, tell you, you never grew up knowing how to scale a wholesaling operation. No, I didn't either. I scaled it we myself. <laughs> and so books like this changed everything. Like how to like hire out, things like that what to look for employees. And this guy's basically like old corporate CEO guy, just teaching entrepreneurs how to do it. Right. Yeah. So what I want you to know is like nothing. And I had a guy, this guy has a proprietary scaling system. He does not. He's using this scaling companies have been going ever since the, um, the Dutch, uh, the Royal Dutch trading company or whatever from the 1500s scaling up a company has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's just been a while. So just secret. understanding this, you just got to do what's working. And what has been going on forever. And so if you want to learn how to do the knowledge, right? I have a free wholesaling course. Here's the issue. There's roughly maybe a hundred, maybe 150. If you do the entire thing, videos inside of freewholesaling.com. There's roughly what? 80, 90 episodes of Breaking Bad. Um, if you choose just not to watch Breaking Bad and just go to freewholesaling.com, pretty much equal. Okay. So like for everyone that complains there's too many videos, stay broke. That's all I can tell you. All right. Go, go. You all will watch 12 seasons of the Sopranos. No problem. But when it comes to watching 90 videos, and like if you look at the hours of The Sopranos, it's like they're hour long things, right? I like the Sopranos. They're like 20 minute videos we got. Go through Free Wholesaling. It's our free wholesaling course. So we have, if you check the Zatkin YouTube channel, the Rickkin YouTube channel, Flip with Rick and the Wholesaling House is for real. We have probably 8,000 videos that are all unique from mm -hmm. all of them. It's about 100, 150 that it got water, like it got in, intense. Like these is all you need to know. Yeah, you get inside our head. So we have a free wholesaling course called freewholesaling.com. What, what's the catch? Let me tell you the catch. I don't want, okay, my, my biggest pet peeve, and this is before we made the course, right? Zach, how do I get started in wholesaling? It's like, ugh. And then what I did is I just, I, I messaged a paragraph to the guy. Yeah. How do I cold call? What's your script? Oh, and then message a paragraph to the guy. And like, these are all the messages I got every day. And I'm like, I'm kind of getting sick of telling people how to cold call, like my script five times a day over, I'm like, you know what? Let me just make a course. Mm-hmm make it free. And then like, I don't have to waste my time talking. And I'm not saying that in like an egotistical way, but like, I can't individually call everyone and say, this is how you cold call. This is my script. Let's make a video and you can do it. Right. It helped me a lot when it came to scaling my cold callers out. Right. It wasn't just me individually uh, training my cold. I had a video of me closing a seller and then I gave it to my acquisitions people. And it was like, I got to train 50 acquisitions people at a time. And so Furlson.com is our free wholesaling course. You don't have to sign. You don't even have to use it. I'm just telling you. But if you have a knowledge issue, this is it. There's no core, there's no cost to it. It teaches you step by step what to do, and there's no fluff. There's nothing that. And a lot of people go, "Hey, what's the catch? What are you doing with it?" The old school mentality of, of especially wholesaling with gurus was, "Well, everybody wants my information, so I'm just going to sell it." It'll work for a little while, but eventually, you just run so many people over. They just like, when does the selling stop? So. Me and Zach went the complete opposite way. And honestly, I had no idea what was going to happen with it. But like my whole thought was like the more people we help out, the more traction we get and the more opportunities for everybody avail. So when we launched it, we got a lot of crap from people for it. But like we're the only people still to this date that give out 100% of our wholesaling course, 100% free. You don't need a credit card to even look at it. And that's the biggest pet peeve. People get in there like, well, you're not doing what you say or like, the course is very watered down. There's only like six videos. There's, there's a lot. It's, it was the biggest complaint. It was my biggest complaint in the business. Let me see your, oh, no, no, you got to sign an NDA or you got to do this or like you got to write me a giant check and you have to do payments. I'm like, I just want to learn how to wholesale. Is it really that complicated? Yeah. I've been doing this 20, it's not that complicated. And we just switched it. And the idea is I want to create a legacy. We've already teach more people in wholesaling and Listen, I'm a marathon uh, wholesaler. I'm not a marathon runner. A, I can do a half marathon, but I'd probably struggle today to do that. Is if you want to be with someone that's truly into the game today, which I am 21 plus years, I teach you how to run a marathon and wholesaling. Sprinters, you're going to see them come and go. A marathon yeah. runner, even if someone sprints by them, they stick to their game plan. I'm doing my government list. I'm making X amount of calls. I'm going to get there. 
because a sprinter is just a marathon runner in disguise. Their ego's taking over. They're super busy people and they want to look really good. Listen, I want to fill your bank account and actually make you happy. You're going to have to go through pain to get there. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So there's two things you need to know about Freelancing.com. Number one, the catch is, and we do it for a legacy, we do it for us. If God forbid, knock on wood, if we both disappear from the earth tomorrow, which won't happen, but not by choice, not by choice. The gurus do not like me. Um, That course can, I have millions and millions of dollars that I can use just to keep the website going when I'm gone. Right. And that can teach people the next 15, 20 years at a wholesale. It's fundamentally not going to affect it right too much. Um, And so that's a legacy thing. And number two, why, why should you go through the course? Let me tell you exactly why. When he, when he started the course, I had three wholesalers. Uh, They're, they're very big. You guys would know the names. I'm not, not a group of three. These are three individual people from different markets. Mm -hmm. They all individually messaged me. This is before I had like a lot of subscribers. I came out the course. They they literally said, they said, if you do not shut down this course, I will tell every single mentor and coach in the industry to blacklist you and you will never be on their podcast. You'll never be promoted and you'll never sell anything. This course, like we, we, it's too much. You're giving too much. And this is a good, is uh, this is a good boys club, good old boys club. You cannot give this much information out. I have the screenshots. I don't want to end these people, but I do have the proof. Yeah. And they said, I'm gone. I'm flying out to, uh, I, I can't even say that. If I said the place, no, you, you guys would know exactly who I'm talking about and where I'm talking about. They're flying out to this place and they're like, I'm telling everyone on stage never to ever talk to you because you give out too much information and I can't sell. And I have the screenshots. I got the proof. I have gurus wives in my DMs telling me to stop what I'm doing. Can you confirm that? Can can you confirm that? Yes or no? It's true. It's It's true. true. I have screenshots of my Conor McGregor of gurus wives, plural, messaging me to stop what I'm doing because their husband's a little stressed out that uh, they're not making enough uh, enough money on on the coaching programs anymore because of freelancing.com. So why should you join freelancing.com? Number one, because they're all breathing down my necks. And if you go to frillsing.com, you make the guru cry. Now, I'm not individually talking to anybody like that. Um, None of those people were ever on my YouTube channel or never been seen on my channel. So people can speculate who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about um, anyone that I've ever had on my channel. But uh, you know who I'm talking about. So guys, if (laughs) if somebody ever asked you to sign an NDA for for a real estate course, run run it it just it goes complete opposite of trying to help people and being fully transparent it makes no sense to me and like when i saw it getting to that level i said man we we have got to we got to change this industry so as like any other rebels like when you change the community like people f- threaten attack you if you do this or do that i'm okay i'm perfectly fine being blackballed in the coaching community because i am not like any other regular coach i Honestly, all I want to do is help people out. I think if everyone would hold hands and we'd help each other, but it's never going to happen, guys. You've seen it between organizations and we're going to do this and that. And the minute you shoot an arrow in it, it like disappears. I'm just telling you, I, I don't understand why there's such a brick wall between information and like cash. It's ridiculous. So if everybody wins and everybody makes money together, then it, it's a huge win. I just... If you had a course, why wouldn't you let someone try it out for at least 30 days to see if it's like even for real? The reality is you wouldn't put it out there if you don't think it's what it truly is. So it means I just put it out there. So it's a free course, Let the chips fall where they're going to fall. In the long term, the marathon wholesaler, not only will he change the industry, we'll still be here while everybody else does it old school. Give me 10 grand. I'll show you how to do this. I'll show you how to do it in three months. Also, the course gets updated every month. FYI, like we change videos. We put more... And also on freelancing.com, I have videos that I, I post on YouTube. They get taken down because of the privacy policies and I'm giving too much. Basically, like I can give out a person's personal address and stuff and all this stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I probably shouldn't, but I have it on. I literally have, have to have private servers. I have, I have to pay for. I get terabytes of traffic daily, pretty much, mm-hmm. of people streaming the videos. Remember, you got hundreds of thousands of people watching every single day. I have to pay for that. Like, it's very expensive. And so um, I have private servers where literally we host the videos. And so they can't get taken down. I can't get censored. I had an SMS text boxing video where I was texting sellers live. YouTube shot it down. I have to post inside of Ferguson.com on the private server. That is the point here. So guys, this is a do or die moment for you. This is a moment. This is a day that is going to have to be the change for you. I don't decide if today's the change for you. You don't decide. You decide. Once you understand that the, ex- the external 
things outside of my life are not going dicta- to dictate my success and that the only person that can actually dictate my success is myself, that'll, do, that, that'll be the change for you. A lot of people feel like, oh, it's because what I look like. It's how tall I am. It's my gender. It's what country. It's because I have an accent. It's none of those things you can't control. It's what you can control that will dictate your success. I think a lot of people have that mindset, right? So you have to thrive or die. Your dreams are going to thrive or die based on you. This is easy for me to think about because if you're not successful, I know it's based on you. It's not because of external, because of me. I've given you everything you need to know. I've helped plenty of people get successful. And so when do you become a winner or loser in wholesaling? And I've talked about this a lot of times, and this gets a lot of people get get upset with me saying this, but in wholesaling real estate, there's only three types of people. I can, every single wholesale, I can put in three categories. It's kind of crazy, but it's true. There are winners. Mm -hmm. People like get the first deal. They're doing well, right? There are losers. And that's a very mean way to do it. I know it's really raw, raw, er, alpha type thing, but there are winners and losers. I legit will look at somebody and say, you are a loser in wholesaling real estate. I'm not saying that in a mean way, but they were legitimately a loser. Okay. And then there's a third category. I call them winners in training. All right. Those are the threes. And so we know what a winner is. What's a winner in training? A winner in training is somebody that hasn't gotten the first deal, but they're a marathon runner, right? So like, for example, somebody's running their marathon and they're seven miles in. Are they a, are they theoretically a, uh, a marathon finalist or a finisher? They're not a marathon finisher, but they're, they're actively participating. Mm-hmm. They could decide to quit at mile 15, but they haven't. They had the potential of being a winner, but we just, we got to see what happens. We, the race is still going, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have losers. What's a loser? A loser is somebody that quits. I'm just being completely honest with you. You only lose in a marathon. A marathon is, unless you're like a race, 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 it's not a race. It's like you just finishing the marathon is a winner. Right? I've done a marathon before. I've, I've told you, I've trained hard for it and I did it. It was a win for me just to finish, right? You only lose when you quit. So are you a winner, loser, or winner in training? Think about that for a second. Wait, so you're telling me even if I walked the marathon, if I didn't, if I just didn't quit, yeah, you're theoretically, you did a marathon that day, right? And so it's better to run the whole time, obviously. But like you only lose when you quit. Is it better to walk a marathon and it takes you two days or is it better to run 15 miles and then quit? It's better to walk it, right? You are only a loser when you quit. So if you decide I'm done, I quit, it's over. You have fundamentally given up on your dreams, your success and everything to go back to the complacent life that you have. Don't be a loser, be a winner. Here's the truth. It's winner or loser, you're talking about <clears throat> running a marathon, which is a great analogy today. Would you agree both the winner and the loser at a marathon, they're both focusing on that end crossing line, how it's going to feel. Both sides agree. Ah, that's the moment everybody wants. That's the end result. The reality is the marathon runner accepts it's going to be hard. I'm going to have to hustle. I'm going to have to grind. And there's going to be days I just want to quit or I'm so exhausted I can't do it. But I have the belief in my why. I have the conviction and I, I'm i going to get through it. I know it's going to be hard. The quitter just focuses on the end and they assume they never have to do much. I'm just going to skip it. He's going to make 20,000 calls. I'm going to make 20. I'm going to get it done in 20 calls. And honestly, they were set up from failure day one. An analogy is if you watch the guru's course thing and it just looked perfect and voila, voila, he's seeing $200,000 wires coming in every other day. And like, that's all you focused on. And you didn't even peel the layers back and go, what's it going to do? Go talk to a true marathon runner. They're going to tell you about how their feet swelled up, how they snapped their ankles. I got stories. (laughs) How they passed out and they couldn't get it done. That's the stories you have to embrace. The person who talks about running a marathon and only folk, you know, like, you know, the person that slides, you know, those people that cheat on marathons, like they kind of slide uh, in at the finish line, like, woohoo, yeah. that's a quitter. And you got to understand they both have this, they want the same result. The only difference is the marathon runner accepts the agony and pain they're going to go through. They get it and they embrace it with their belief from their why and their conviction. It's the only difference. A quitter never, yeah. they don't want to do any of the stuff. And if they were honest with themselves, they probably shouldn't have ever even started. They just wanted the, the credit. And that's your ego speaking. And I've always told you, if you truly want to be good at wholesaling, I can just drop your ego off at the door. It is self-serving. And if you want to be right all the time, you can be right, but you're going to be, you're going to be wrong in the end when you do it. So let me, when you're running, especially in a marathon, and let's say you have David Goggins just laps you, right? Two, there's two types of people that see that, right? They say, wow, that man's not a quitter. That's impressive. That inspires me to keep going. 
Mm-hmm. Or you look next to you and see someone do that and you say, oh, I'm never going to be like that. Oh, I should be able to quit, the, right? David Goggins those are, the wholesale. Those are two, 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 th- th- that person is just doing their thing. They don't care what, they're, they're, not, they're not looking around. They're just looking straight. And so you can, you can look while you're running at other people and see, but comparison truly is the thief of joy. If you compare yourself to where they're at at their journey and you have expectations with that, you won't do well. And so a lot of people, you know, we talk about happiness, how I feel in wholesaling, right? There's not one equation that I found, and I'm just giving you what I thought. This might not be the best thing to talk, but this is, this is just real talk. If you want to see if you're happy in your wholesaling business right now, if you're happy in life or happiness at all in general, there's only one equation of there's, that's it. Okay. It's called expectations minus reality. That is what your happiness is. Let me explain this. You are, let's say you wake up today, you're broke, you're sad. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, you're just mopey all day, right? But you have, let's say, two kids. Uh huh. Let's say, God forbid, one of those kids passed away that day. Um, you're going to be way worse. And then let's say the next day, that was just a dream. You're going to wake up, you'll be like, you're going to hug your kids, you're going to be so happy because your kids are actually alive. It was just a dream. Guys, I've had this all the time. Like, I have dreams of like, you know, something like I had a dream once where I went blind. I woke up the next day. I was like, I am so happy. I have my eyesight. Like, who cares how much money I have? Like, I can see. And there, there's things more valuable than money, obviously. And what I want you to know is if you're expecting your, you to go blind and then you don't go blind, you're a lot happier, right? If you expect to uh, live to age 40, that's what the doctor told you when you live to age 70, you're a lot happier, right? Guys, you're, a lot of people have these, ex, these heavy expectations in wholesaling. I'm going to get a million dollars in a year. I'm going to get a Lamborghini in a year. And then you don't get that. You end up being unhappy, but you made a quarter million dollars this year, right? Why do you think I'm so satisfied in my life? I told myself I can start out wholesaling when I'm 30 years old, 23 right now. So old. At 30 years old, if I can just make 100K a year. Yeah. So I told myself I was making 825 an hour. If I can make 100K a year, I'll, I will grind all day just to make 100K, right? And, uh, you know, I'm making easily over 100K a month wholesaling. It's like, like, why am I upset, right? And so like, I get a deal. Like we, we have a guy screwed us on a deal always. Mm-hmm. Lose 40 grand. It's like, uh, but I'm like, well, you know, I 100K, like- coming in every like like clockwork right and so like that's it guys and so if, if you ever see yourself unhappy about something it's because you're not content at what you have right now and if something in your life right now that you truly love and cherish gets taken away then you'll realize once it's gone that you should have been happier in that situation if you ever bring me back in time and if everyone's ever like loved ones or someone that pass away if you could go back in time and be with that person for an hour that'd be everything to you but in that moment right now you're just like yeah, it's, it's, it's my uncle, John, you know, it's my uncle, Sam. Right. And like, you're just like, eh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm a, no, you'd be like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of you guys have this un this burden of expectation in wholesaling, just expect there's only one expectation you should have. Right. Of course, I want you to get rich. Of course, I want you to get wildly successful. But the one expectation you need to have is just, I want to get better every day. If you can just have that expectation. I just want to be a better man, a better wholesaler every single day. Yeah, It will compound mm-hmm. over time. But when you have these crazy expectations, oh, I didn't get a deal. It's been two weeks. You're going to be unhappy and that leads you to quit, right? Unhappiness leads to you quitting and wholesaling. And what is happiness? Expectations minus reality. Just, I've never found one better equation than that. Um, it will change your life. I promise you. And guys, I understand <clears throat> me and Zach aren't people who sit around and, hey, look at this nice car or look at the nice boat or look at this beautiful house I live in. Those are just things, man. Like if you think that crap's going to make you happy in your life, trust me, it's nice to have. But the the reality is if you if you look like just like a monk, they teach you just how to be. Ha- if you can't be happy with like yourself, you got to start there and just expand on everything else you, you do. The biggest thing you guys got to stop doing is stop doing what most Americans do. Stop trying to look rich and learn how to actually become rich. They are two different equations. And the problem is the one trying to look rich, you will run out of gas. I promise you, and it will never, ever get you financially successful. The other people just want to go forward and do it. They will get there. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. But you you have to choose which camp you want to do. And you have to do it today. Because if you want to look rich, we are not the people for you. There's plenty of gurus make you look rich out there. It's ridiculous. At the end of the day, learn how to become rich. Stop trying to look rich. And you'll actually learn how to fulfill yourself from the inside and stop trying to do things from the outside. Honestly, if I lost everything tomorrow, I'd know exactly how to make it back. 
and I'm fine with it. And at the end of the day, I'm not taking the stuff with me. So why would I sit here and brag to you guys about it? It's like, I don't have an ego in this business. I got rid of it long time. I got humbled a long time ago with it. And it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Everyone's like, look at my house. Look at this. And look at, I rather look at the character of a person, look them in the eyes and go, listen, how much, show me your family and I'll show you how happy you are. And that's the Uh end statement. It is never about how much money you make. I am not the guy who's going to show you, I make the most money. This is not like a king. That is ego. I got to make the most money. Steve Jobs made a crap load of money. It didn't help him out in the end. And I'm here to tell you, you've got to understand that life's short, find it from within, and then get the financial freedom and the freedom of your time. Because if you're in a race to make the most amount of money, it's not going to work for you. I'm telling you, that's it. So why am I, I mean, trust me, I like nice stuff. Don't get me wrong. I like nice boats too. But why am I wildly happy today? He woke up here. He woke up today and he's alive. Gratitude. And I woke up today and I'm alive. And my family is all alive today. There's nothing more I'd ever want in my life than this. And so, you know, the cash, the riches, it's very nice. But just understand, don't feel like you're a loser because you haven't gotten a wholesaling deal. You, you, getting rich is great, but there, there's more to life than that. But let's kind of get back to getting rich, right? Let, let's talk about this. And let, let me, uh, we kind of go off of that. But let, let, let's get back to getting rich, right? Because it's about family, right? Mm-hmm. Getting everyone out. I'm going to probably tell you the most, br- I, I, I saved this kind of towards the end a little but um, this is probably the most brutal thing you are going to hear from me today. And it's, it's going to hurt, but it's true. There's nothing more I can tell you to get you to get out of bed and get going. But you're, you are your family's last hope. You're your family's last hope. Let, let, me, let me say that one more time. You are your family's last hope. What does that mean to you? I, I, think about that for a second. If you're your family's last hope at financial freedom, success, they're all working jobs. They, they can't do it, but you can. What does that mean? Does that mean you are just going to sit on your butt today? Go watch some Netflix and just like eat some pop tarts and just not work hard. You are your family's last hope at actually achieving success, financial freedom, and getting out of those jobs and actually doing well. If you're the man or woman that decides that, hey, I know I'm my family's last hope. I have to do something about it. You'll do something about it. It's it's a hard statement to understand. It's a hard statement to swallow. It's it's really emotional, but you are your family's last hope. What you do with that statement will determine exactly where you're going to be next year, right? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing more to say about that. You are your family's last hope. The, the reality do is about it or not. You, you, you just listen. Show them. Don't tell them. This is the big difference, and it is a monumental difference between showing and telling. Showing gets people excited. I'm sorry. Telling people gets excited. Showing has a monumental effect on the family. I think about a long time ago, I've always thought about like, if I didn't do wholesaling and I stayed in my corporate job, what effect, I know the effect it would have had on my family, my wife, what would Zach wind up doing? Listen, I think he would have been wildly successful, but he might've had to gone through the corporate rat race like I did to really, and that cost me 12 years of my life. I had to like go through that journey. Why? Because I literally took the people that love me the most and I took their advice to heart like all children do. And the problem is they weren't the best people to give me advice. And it's hard to swallow as a parent and having your child center. But like, this is the reality. And this is why I want to explain to everybody, like, look at who you're taking advice from and make a decision. But if I didn't take the guts to make that change, and honestly, it wasn't risky for me because I had 12, it was like 12 years of a prison to me. I, probably not the best analogy, but, and now he sees the light, at, like he had no fear when he went for it. He still had to do the work, guys. What's the difference? Like those of you think I stuck a spoon in his mouth, I made it 10 times harder on him than anyone else have ever worked on any of these right. live streams. I was brutal. Because on a cold call sometimes that's what you have to do to like, you ever heard of the analogy? Like sometimes you got to push the, the mother bird pushes them out of the nest. I guess. So. And either they're going to fall and break their neck or they're going to take off. Now you don't quite need that. There's no physical risk here, but like, listen, if you're, if your kids aren't happy or you're not happy to me, that's much more of a risk and a liability than taking the risk to actually become free. So many of you think you don't have an option. Guess what? Everything you do in your life is your choice. Every outcome, everything within parameters when you're young and you're stuck with it. But listen, Zach said earlier, how you react to a situation is 100% in your control. So you can start there and then you can use that mentality, that attitude to work forward out of your hole. I don't care how deep you are in it, guys. There's always hope you're alive. 
Use the gratitude. Be thankful for everything you have and stop setting this wild expectation. Don't let a guru set it. Don't let me and Zach set it for you. Set it for yourself, man. You deserve more. Your family deserves more. Remember, show them. Don't tell them that's the difference. The only thing that'll get somebody to work is I hate to, your family. They're, what Your success in wholesaling, your family, is, it's literally riding on your back. And a lot of people take that pressure and they collapse under it or they take that pressure and they actually man up and decide to make a change. What are you going to do with that pressure on your shoulders? There's a lot of pressure on your shoulders, right? But if you can decide that you're going to use as motivation, not fear, you'll do well. Maybe that statement puts you in fear, fear to screw up. If you don't do anything, you won't get anywhere. And so you have to make that change, not for yourself, not for your, any, for your family. Um, and that motivates me the most. That gets me out of bed. It's, and if you don't have a family, you're an only child or like you got no kids or whatever, orphan or whatever, it's for your future family. Think about that for a second too. So you got to understand that you have to, this is all riding or dying on you. And so when I talk to people and let's talk, talk about you actually going out here and you're in the grind now and you come to me and you're like, how many cold calls should I make? How many should I do this? Or I'm doing so hard, but I'm not doing well. Think of the statement. I always, I love this statement. It's nobody cares, work harder. And that this is the most important statement. You don't stop until you get the deal. Don't stop. If you don't stop, you keep one foot over the other, you keep going. Nobody cares how many calls you've made. Nobody cares how many texts you've done. You can always do more. And I know that's a very like Kobe Bryant statement, DJ Khaled type thing, like more, more, but it's true. I, your mind has a governor switch on it of how hard you can work and how hard you think you're working. But when you look at other people, you're not even putting the work in hours, right? And so most people think an hour of cold calling is insane. I did five hours a day and there's probably a guy doing eight hours a day. It's just a lot of people will underestimate the amount they can make in wholesaling real estate over a long term, but they overestimate in the short term. You just got to work. I don't know. I know it's cliche to say you just got to work hard. Everyone who's done been, been successful has worked hard and nobody's going to hear your complaints of how hard. And this is one thing I want to just quit the excuses. I've never complained because no one, it falls on deaf ears. You get some sympathy. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're it just so gets hard. in the way. You waste yeah. time. Like excuses and everything like that. Just listen, you got to focus on wholesaling and put on the blinders. Stop going for all these tricks, all these, I've got this special contract. You can sell it retail or you can partner with the homeowner. Or if you're on a bus and you're going to Home Depot to look at toilets, you are not wholesaling. I'm here to tell you it's all a distraction. I am a hardcore wholesaler. It's what I do. To me, it's the single best skill set you can learn in real estate because I've never met a wholesaler that can't hit it out of the park in every other area. Try to do it the other way around. It never works. Give me a fix and flipper tries wholesaling, 100% failure rate. Guys, exactly. stop with all the distractions, exciting stuff. It's mundane. It's redundant. It's boring. But that's what makes it work. All the other stuff is just a sales tactic. Stop falling for it. You have got to get to work. And guess what? Nobody cares about your excuses. Nobody's, you're not, I don't have a credit card machine to swipe on his thing going, okay, oh yeah, she made 20 cold calls. Here yeah. we go. At the end of the day, if it takes you a hundred thousand cold calls, do it, stop it. And when you go to give someone an excuse, stop yourself, go, you know what? I can do better. Give them a plan going forward. Excuse just waste time. So many of you guys come on these things like, wow, I tried so hard, Rick. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to like rub your back? Like, it's the reality. You haven't paid me a dime. And I'm still trying to bend over and help you more than any other guru out there that you've given five or 10 grand to. I want to make a change, but like, you've got to believe in yourself. Nobody cares. You've got to work harder. And there's not one wholesaling guru that talks, says that. I don't, oh, it's, all it's easy. not because you I can do it. You I can, can do feel it. Bad. I can feel bad, but the, the truth is just nobody cares. Keep, keep the excuses and the complaining to yourself. You just got to keep going. Don't, don't, don't it, it's your mind trying to find a way to get you to stop. Oh, it's so hard to, okay, Roger that. Keep it going, right? Yeah. It's the marathon. Oh, now your stomach's hurting or maybe you got a little cramp. Like oh, I'm cramping. I don't care. Keep going. Like it just, the marathon's still there. The distance is still there. You talking and being sad about it ain't going to do a dang thing. Stop negotiating with yourself. That's Stop it. Stop it. And so uh, the last and most important thing here, you know, we, we talk about in wholesaling, like how do I actually get the results, the money, the cash, blah, 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 right? We, we talked about the first deal, right? You should, and this is clickbait, I guess, technically this video now, because <laughs> don't think about getting your first deal as the goal. What do you mean by that? That's where most people get in trouble. They think, I want to get my first deal. Yeah. I'm going to put it on the whiteboard. I'm going to look at it every day. Yeah. Right. This, Yeah right? Mm -hmm. Guess what happens? They feel good for a second and they say, but how, how do I get that? Like, wait, 
okay, I want to get my first deal. I want to make 30 grand this month, but like, how do I do that? Uh, uh Uh-oh. Right? Yeah. That, that, that's what happens, right? Actions equal results. And so, you know, math, how math works. Uh, <laughs> if you don't yeah. know what the results are, you just got to do the action. It takes, so for example, you'll make 30 grand this month. You're going to be like, how do I make 30 grand? Right? No, no, no. Let's stop looking at the results. No. Let's do seven. Eh, let's do 500 reverse drawing for dollars leads. Okay. That's actually, that's actually a goal that I can actually do. Okay. Let's do the math. Let's grab my phone. So, okay, 500. If I do that every day for 30 days, that's 17 basically. So 17 sticky notes put out a day. That's actually a goal I can look at every single day and say, hey, did I do that or not? Did I do 17 or did I not do 17? Yep. Did I coke off for five hours a day or did I not coke off for five hours a day? When you start looking at that, it's like, whoa, that changes everything, right? Because looking at 30, did I make 30 grand today or not? No, Ugh, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, did I put 17 out? That's it. So guys, actions equal results. So I know a lot of people think, oh, I want to run a marathon. It's like, Just look at how many, I don't know, how much of a distance you have to run over 30 minutes. It can do it from there, right? Your actions are going to equal your results. And so that's how you get your first deal, guys. I I hate to say it. I know I'm kind of slapping people in the face today with it, but a lot of you guys do have to wake up. You saw the thumbnail today. You got to get up. Like A lot of you guys are sleeping. You're sleepwalking through life. This is not the time to be doing it. You, You can't be walking around all star. You have to make the change.